Hello YouTube. Today I'm just going to go over the key fob. I have a 2011 Dodge Ram um, and the key fobs uh, don't work. Specifically uh, the button that doesn't work is the start button. Um, or let me sorry, the unlock button. The lock button appears to work, the panic button works, and the engine start button works. Now I've had two of these and they both failed on me 2011 to 2006, five years, two and a half years per key fob. And so I'm just going to do an, a teardown and some thoughts about this key fob. Um, so when we take it apart, we see you know a battery here, um, and there is uh, this is the front plastic casing. Sorry about the shakiness, guys. Um, there's the electronics board, and here is the uh, the switches, like a tact switch or a tactile switch. And you can see these are discs and they are concave and they kind of snap flat against these, uh, looks like maybe gold contacts. Um, so anyways, I've taken these apart and I've cleaned these contacts and I've cleaned these contacts. Now these metal contacts are kind of glued onto the rubber here. And for some reason, you know, it's that contact right there just seems to quit working on that connector. Um, and so it's been kind of frustrating. I've called the dealer up um, and asked them about replacement. Uh, asked them about replacements, and they want two hundred dollars for a factory replacement key. And then they also want um, they also want eighty dollars programming, a charge for programming the key fob. And I've just been able to come to pay that kind of money. And then also being an analyst and looking at things, hold on, I'm trying to get this thing on a tripod. Um, try to come up with a couple solutions. I try to estimate how many times maybe I've pressed this button, and I don't know, maybe it could be in the realm of 10,000 over five years, um, 15,000, I don't know. That seems like a high number to me. Anyway, um, the electronics are solid. If I, if I put the board together <clears throat> and then I just short out between, sorry, the center contact and the outside contact, the, you know, the door unlocker works every time. So it has something to do with the, this metal disc here. And on one of them, I tried to clean it. And when I was trying to clean it, um, uh, I, I knocked it off the rubber. And then you try to re-glue it, and that's just kind of pointless. Sorry, you can't, you can't even see them out of, out of screen here. So trying to clean these things, I, I knocked them off. Putting a, a voltmeter on them, you know, just owing them out, they seem to have resistance built into them. Um, so I don't know if original factory ones they do or don't have resistance into them. Anyway, it's just kind of frustrating overall that, again, the dealer, um, $200 for a key, $80 for programming. And so like I asked the dealer, I say, um, is that for a set of keys? And they go, oh no, that's just one key. And I'm like, okay, so they want $600, uh, for a key. So, you know, or a set of keys to work again on a truck that's five years old. Even suggested maybe that I don't take very good care of my keys. Uh, the guy at the dealer suggested I don't take very good care of his keys because his are over 10 years old and his still works. So anyway, uh, on eBay I found a replacement and replacement ones are here. Let me turn the camera up here. And I would just want to show you the key difference on the replacement one that I noticed. First of all, I don't believe it's from the same manufacturer because if you look at this, this says Fobic on it, F-O-B-I-K. Um, and this one does not. So this is an aftermarket, probably not by the same manufacturer. Um, Showing another a difference on the circuit board. Uh, the original <clears throat> the original RAM has this, uh, it's actually a chip. You know, you can see the multi -con multiple contacts on the chip. And... Um, the new one does not have that chip. It actually has, if you look at it, just two connectors and a coil. Um, sorry, you can't get that into focus. So I don't even actually know. I, I tried the programming sequence. I, cu I couldn't get these to program. And then they said I had to go to a dealer. And then the uh, go-go lighting, uh, you know, very, uh, you know, if I'm having problems with programming, they say, just send it back and we'll give you a refund. You know, they don't want any negative comments. So I, I don't know if these would ever actually work or maybe they would, but I did show you the difference that this has a coil on it and this one actually has an IC chip with multiple connections. So 
anyway, that's not the most interesting thing. Uh, the interesting thing I wanted to show you was the new the new contacts. And I know this is going to be kind of hard to show, but uh, if you look at the new contacts, you'll see there's a little nubbin in the center of the connector, and there's three nubbins on the outside. So after I failed to program um, them, I said, well, let's take the pieces, parts, and put them together and use these new contacts with the old electronics. Uh, these contacts with the old electronics and I'll keep the original back because it has the Dodge logo on it and the new back is lacking the Dodge logo and I'll use the um, the new face just because it looks a little bit better to rebuild my key. You know, 37 bucks for two keys as opposed to 600 if it works it works now just to let you know I have put this together and it does work so um, very happy with this uh, repair um, now when I was going through this process and I understand well I'm not I don't have a problem with a dead battery overall the problem has to do with these contacts here these are the original contacts from the original Dodge connector or the Dodge you know RAM key fob you can't clean them one guy suggested putting aluminum tape on there and they did try that and it kind of works for a minute and then it quits working overall it just seems to be not a really great design to me uh, I want to show you one other thing here um, that I had potentially thought for a repair and I bought these from Radio Shack uh, this is a 2.5 millimeter high tack switch it's right here and uh, it's just got a little button that you can press sorry the video is so far away. You can hear the little button there. And then it's got... And then it's gone. It's got contacts that you could, uh, you know, solder. And, you know, with the thought of soldering to the board, it would be kind of a little bit tough. I'd have to figure out how to isolate uh, the other contact, which is here. There. Nope. There. There it is, a tiny little contact there, and I know it's out of focus. <laughs> and get it to the center. And then I could just, uh, you know, if the solder joints would help it, or I could super glue it and take the little metal contactor off. And then, well, the interesting thing, the only thing the reason I wanted to show you this is because I, I went to the manufacturer's website. I mean, I know they say Radio Shack, but Radio Shack bought them. I found the original manufacturer and I uh, went to the specifications. These things are supposed to be work, work at a minimum a hundred thousand clicks which I know what there's no possible way so the question to dodge um, you know wh why are we using this what it was is this I, I mean I'm not even an engineer by trade but I, I'm not saying you know I, I mean if these are failing uh, why wouldn't we just use these because they got a hundred thousand clicks and if they were then you could just send the whole uh, switch back and you wouldn't have to charge your customers six hundred dollars i want to try to stay away from cynicism here but it's i mean this would not have been an expensive change um you know uh if you wanted to buy you know four of these or five for every key fob that you sold i'm sure you could get these price points down where it would be uh, definitely usable and feasible and um, in this situation wouldn't be a problem and then these people if they manufactured why did they why did they do it different what were they thinking? You know, um, if this is the new design, then obviously, Dodge, you guys know that this is a problem. Um, if this is a third party doing this, well, the third party has identified what the problem is with the original one. So uh, anyway, I know I'm out of factory warranty. So, you know, $600 for new stuff or, or, or do it this way. So I fixed my key fobs for 37 bucks. But anyway, I just wanted to go over this and show show you what I've seen and uh, show you how I fixed it um, short of paying uh, Dodge you know $600 for a set of keys <laughs> a side note I'll just tell you about uh, when your unlock button fails to work the only way to get into your car is to take the uh, mechanical key out <laughs> and uh, you know unlock the door and then when you pull the door handle uh, the alarm goes off the built in the alarm uh, which is kind of cute because I've tried every different way to lock the doors. Bottom line is, if the doors are locked, the alarm's on. It's not like they're separate circuits. So uh, as soon as, like, if you hit the lock button and then shut the door, 
um, the other one alarm goes on, which is, I guess, is a good thing, except for when this key fob fails, it reminds you every time you want to drive your truck that you need, you need to run down to Dodge and give them $600 immediately. Anyways, uh, thank you all for watching. Have a good day.